front, this is one of my Bamboo Lab X1 carbons, and underneath this companion cube is my Bamboo Lab P1P, and today I wanted to make this sort of impromptu review video of the P1P and give you guys all of my thoughts on it as I've had access to it now for the past handful of months. I immediately pre-ordered this once it was available, and if you didn't already know the history behind this, the X1 Carbon was a Kickstarter campaign by Bamboo Lab, which is a relatively unknown at the time, 3D printing manufacturing company that was able to launch this ridiculously fast 3D printer that's kind of taken the world by storm, at least within the 3D printed communities. To everyone's surprise, before the end of last year, they announced the P1P, which is basically a slimmed down version of the X1 Carbon at a lower, more affordable price for all of you out there. And I ended up pre-ordering that and buying it as well, along with my X1, my two X1 Carbons. I don't have the AMS unit here, but it can produce some ridiculously cool 3D prints if you're into the multicolor thing. So as you can clearly see, and in fact, I made a whole video on it as well, is one of the coolest parts about the P1P is that you can completely customize the frame of this printer and come up with your own unique design and look to this machine. And as I mentioned, the P1P is just a stripped down version of the same X1 3D printer with just a handful of different things or some things missing from it from the X1. Like obviously the side panels were the biggest noticeable one there, but also you're gonna be missing the things like the lights, the internal camera, you don't have the LiDAR, sensor in there so you're not gonna be able to do some of the other uh, cool little things that it's doing as it's printing and trying to figure out what the optimal setting is for your prints but there is workarounds for that that people have sorted out and Bamboo Lab is actually supporting. The other thing that it's completely changed is you don't have the touch screen interface. You now have this 90s style uh, car stereo looking thing here that allows you to control the 3D printer it's not great and we'll get into that here in just a few minutes uh, but the other big thing that it comes with that the P, uh, that the X1 doesn't come with is the P1P comes with this textured build plate which I love and now have the exact same build plates on my X1 carbons compared to the default smooth sheets that those come with the P1P is also sporting the direct drive extruder I believe this has an all hardened steel nozzle compared to the other one that's on the X1. I'm not that technical, you guys. Uh, but this basically is designed for exactly what I like printing, which is 90% of the time I'm printing with PLA or occasionally with TPU or PETG. That's exactly what this machine, the P1P, was set up to be used for. If you wanna be printing with things like ABS or other materials that are a bit more complex that you're gonna need that full on enclosure, you're probably better off going with the X1 3D printer. But for the most part, this suits my printing, like my daily printing needs exactly because it's just a fast, ultra fast, high quality 3D printing machine, but it's definitely got its annoying quirks. You also have the same auto bed leveling that's on this, so you don't have to worry about adjusting any bolts or anything like that with the build plate. It's automatically gonna take care of that. Again, there's no camera built into this by default. You can add one in. I ended up, again, pre-ordering this, and it came with the, I think the pre-order bundles came with a kit of a camera, the larger fan that you would find on the inside, like the X1, as well as the internal light system. I have I have not installed the lights. I have not installed the fan yet. I'm just kind of lazy with that. I did install the camera and I, for the life of me, have never been able to get the internal camera to work. And I've unplugged, replugged multiple times on this thing, just cannot get it to work. And at this point, I've just sort of given up on it. There is also the same poop chute that you're gonna find on the back, and this is compatible with the AMS system. So if you wanted to buy this at a lower price compared to the X1, but still wanted to be able to do the multi-color printing, you can add on or buy that AMS system and plug it directly into the P1P to allow you to do multi-color printing. I have not done that. I've just kept mine on my one X1 Carbon. I don't really do a whole lot of multi-color printing. To be honest, I just find it super wasteful when it comes to the material, and the prints just take way too long, so I'd rather just stick with with uh, printing in one color or changing the colors as needed manually. So the last two features that you're also gonna find on the X1 is that it is Wi-Fi compatible. This 3D printer has that built in so that you can wirelessly send files that you've sliced in Bamboo Studio on your computer directly to the machine. It also means that you can monitor your 3D prints and get notifications from the Handy app over on your phone, which works with iPhone and Androids. The other thing I wanted to mention is that the... <laughs> yeah. 
On the back is where you're gonna find the spool holder. I'm still not a huge fan of the back mounted spool holders on these 3D printers, but I've kind of gotten used to it. I know there are a ton of different mods now for the P1P as well as the X1 printer. So if you wanted to side mount these or top mount them, there are definitely printable accessories to allow you to do that. And because this machine prints so fast and it prints for the most part really well, you can print just a ton of things in a short amount of time. So I'm just gonna be showing you a handful of things, and I mean like a small percentage of the things that I've been printing with this. One of the major things that I had been printing with this before I knocked everything off of the table, basically things that you can run off in 3D print and that you might be interested in selling. If you are someone that likes to print and sell things, this machine works so incredibly well for the price point. I don't even think I've mentioned that. It's $6.99 for this machine, which is a good bit less than the, what's it, $1,000, $1,200, something like that for the X1 printers there. Again, you're not gonna have the multicolor systems, but you can add in all this. Mine is super bare bones other than the printed external shell here where I don't even have the added upgraded fan or the light system or, I mean, I've got the camera in there, but again, it doesn't work. I didn't even put in the chain on there. There's a printed chain that you can now install in there. I think you can even buy it. But being able to quickly run off and print things that you're selling, makes your life so much easier. And it's super, I guess for the most part, it's really reliable. I have had still a number of print failures with this, so you still have to closely monitor the 3D prints because it is moving so fast, you do run the risk of things like slinging off the bed from time to time. This is an armored Deadpool face mask here. I have the full helmet and a whole bunch of different pieces. I haven't even bothered cleaning it up to get this thing fully assembled yet. That's just my ever going process of printing way too many things before I've actually finished the last project. Also, if you decide to get a P1P, you're gonna be working with Bamboo Studio. That's Bamboo Lab Slicer. For the most part, I've really enjoyed using that slicer. I think it honestly works better than Prusa Slicer. I find it a lot more user friendly to work with and intuitive. I love that I can have multiple build plates in there, setting up different print jobs. The profiles are really easily managed. There are also predefined profiles that work with the P1P as well as the X1 printer, as well as for the different nozzle sizes that you can slap on there as well. I think those different nozzle sizes could be expanded, the profile support a little bit better. But for the most part, I just rock the default profiles that are on there and I might tweak them ever so slightly when printing some of the silk PLAs. I've also printed some really fun things like stack Statues here, like this thing bust here from Inspiree. In, not Inspiree, it's Insp <laughs> Inspire. Inspire 3D. And I cannot get this to stay on the base for the life of me. Also, a bunch of the Gutshot Games tabletop pieces here. I ended up printing on the P1P, and for sure we'll end up printing more of those here on my different Bamboo Lab printers. And then this one in here, what you might not be aware of is this is a miniature file that I've scaled way up. Like, no supports needed for this. I probably should have put a little bit of supports on there when scaling up so large because there are some overhangs that were not accounted for that well. But I also printed it at the, like, a really fine, I think this was... 0 0.08 millimeter layer height or something like that. And it turned out so crisp and clean. And what's even crazier to me is if you print miniatures, I ended up printing this little tortured guy here on the P1P as well. And it was like a 25 minute print or something like that. Actually, hold on. Let me jump right into this because th this is where I wanted to mention some of my like frustrations that I've had with this machine is it's the little things that drive me nuts about this printer. And the best news is it's not the print quality. The print quality for the most part looks really good. I am seeing some of that ghosting or slight ringing effects on most of these prints. And I think a number of people have called that out as well. So hopefully there's some future firmware updates that help address that because I think it could look just ever so slightly cleaner with the surface finish of the prints. But what I'm really referring to here is that some of the annoyances. Let me get started with this because I said, I think this miniature was like a 25 minute print because when you actually finish a print on here, this interface here, this screen doesn't display any information about the print job that just finished. 
why? I don't know why they can't put the finished print job time on there or what file I just finished printing. Like basic information that has been there since I started 3D printing back in what, 2014, 2015 on every single printer up until this machine here refuses to display any information about the print job after you've printed it. Sometimes it will randomly not respond to any input whatsoever for about, I don't know, 20 seconds or so, or you might have to just completely turn it off and turn it back on again in order to get the touch screen to respond to any of the button commands on the front there. Also, how have they managed to come up with a worse design than the $100 Ender 3 single wheel click display? I don't know, but this is so, incredibly frustrating to work with at times where it's just the navigation of it doesn't seem to make a whole heck of a lot of sense. Sometimes you have to go over and then into some menus. Sometimes you just have to go over and then press up or down. It doesn't, it's, it's like not the same. It's not the same throughout everything. Also, when I'm going in to select a file for the love of everything, put the files in the newest to oldest sort order for me so that when I go in there to print a file, I'm not scrolling through a whole bunch of files to try and find mine that I've just added in there, which is just in some random, it's in a completely random order, it seems. It's not in any sequential order that I can think of or see. It's not like it's an alphabetical order or uh, the first to last or something like that. No, just give me the latest file that was put on the card there and then that should be better than nothing. Oh, and speaking of selecting your files, I've had it happen multiple times where I've gone in to select a print job and then it starts a completely different print. And thankfully, I've ended up catching them after they've been like an hour into the print job and didn't like completely leave and let them run for the day and notice that it was printing the wrong file after selecting it. Let's say you start a print job that you've sent from your computer from the slicer to the printer, and we'll talk about that whole fun bit there in just a second. But if I, for whatever reason, maybe the print is failing and I need to stop the print job. So I stopped the print job and now I've cleaned everything up and I wanna reprint that print job, I can't do that. I have to either re-slice the file and send it to the machine, or if you know, you can go into the menu system here, into the files, and if you look for the file that's named BB1, because that's completely logical and select that, that allows you to reprint the last job that you sent from your computer to the machine, which what's the naming convention there? I don't know, but like, I'm surprised anybody knows that. Like, it's just, it makes no sense. It makes no sense why it would be called that. It's very random. And before I get to my biggest complaint that I have with this machine, which is actually now a little bit better after a firmware update, uh, the other thing that I wanted to call out is the micro SD card is, again, I don't know why they continue to make these slots such a pain to get the card in and out of, where on the X1, it's not easy to get it in and out of there. On the P1P, it's on the top here. Forget that this little panel's here. I can still access that little opening very easily here, but getting my finger to depress that little slot opening in is not fun. And then trying to put the card back in there is equally not fun. It's like, why isn't that just sticking out slightly like most of the other printers if you wanna keep using these micro SD card slots. And now my most frustrating bit of info that I have about the P1P for you is the Wi-Fi connectivity. This is just painful, absolutely painful here. So uh, I normally have these machines at my house because they honestly print so fast that it's hard for me to keep them here in the studio for me to have to keep going back and forth to my house to here to get print jobs going. So I just leave them in my house for the most part and I love that. But wirelessly sending files to the P1P is a huge pain compared to the X1 printers. I don't know why, I'm only assuming that the module is different, like the Wi-Fi module is slightly different between these two machines. 
The other complaint that I had that I was gonna be ranting on that I just updated the firmware today. I saw the, move this printer over here to the building, connected it to the Wi-Fi, saw that there was a firmware update and it's, I believe, fixed this issue. But the issue that I was running into previously is you would send the file, the print job, from the slicer wirelessly to the machine here. It would take a while to transfer that over, a handful of minutes to transfer that over. And then you have to unzip the 3MF file to access the G code file for the printing, which again will take another five plus minutes for that to happen, which I didn't understand why. After this firmware update, it seems to have eliminated that, at least that one intermediary step there. And I did run a test here and the first test, as I'll have up here on screen, took almost 20 minutes for this thing to transfer the file and the print to actually get started printing. That's very annoying. That's extremely annoying. After the firmware update, I think it was around 10 minutes, which is much, much better. Honestly, that's much more in line with what I'm seeing over on the X1. I still think the file transfer speed is a little bit slower on the P1P compared to the X1 still, but I'm hoping again, most of what I've called out and complained about can all be fixed with some basic firmware updates because for the most part, the prints themselves are incredible. This thing, yes, it's loud. So keep that in mind as well. When you're printing, it's a noisy machine, but the prints incredibly fast. The print details are just wonderful for the most part. Again, you've got a little bit of that little ribbing there, whatever that you might find in some of those artifacts that hopefully will get resolved again with some future updates, but for the most part, it still prints drastically better than most of the other printers that I have. You can get it up and running in a minute and I would highly recommend it. I would still highly recommend it if you're in the market for a really fast 3D printer that's under $1,000. If you want a better user experience, I would definitely recommend at least upgrading to the X1 or the X1 Carbon over the P1P. There's just some definite frustrations that I've had with working with this interface that is just, oh, it's so painful and frustrating. And it's just, it's the little things that nick at you over time. It's like over and over. Every time I wanna use this, I end up having to not be able to wirelessly send it. By the way, this is the other big issue that I have with the wire. It's not reliable. I can't get this thing to reliably stay connected to my networks compared to my X1 printers. I can almost always access my X1 printers via the Handy app or by my computer on the network or even remotely from another location. With the P1P, it's it's like on and off, on and off, on and off. It might connect, it might not connect. So I almost always have to slice directly on my computer, export the 3MF file, and then load it on the printer. Another fun tip for you, if you wanna avoid the unzipping of 3MF files for the P1P, you can go into the file menu and then export as G code for your sliced file to skip that whole process. So. Yeah, but overall, if you are interested in the P1P, I'll have links to this down below. It's not being sponsored by Bamboo Lab. Uh, I bought all of these machines all myself here. Uh, if you are interested in it, let me know down below. And I also wanted to say a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters for your continued support of me making goofy content here on the interwebs. If you're interested in more information about my Patreon and its rewards, you can find links into that down below. But let me know what you guys think about the P1P. If you have one, if you're running into the same issues, let me know. I definitely know some people have been running into some of the wireless transfer speed issues that I'm complaining about. And this was just sort of a impromptu video. So there might not be as much B-roll as I typically have with some of these videos. But hey, thanks so much for watching y'all and I'll see you next time.